Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Biogeography, Geography 307. Um, I just want to start out by uh, thanking you all for being virtually here um, and uh, just note that these are very interesting times uh, that require a lot of adjustment. Uh, and so I'm going to do my best uh, with this new format to uh, have a good semester, to make things interesting, to stay engaged, and um, I welcome feedback on that and how that's going. Uh, and with that, let's get started with what this course is all about and what it's going to be. So the first thing is who's teaching the course. That's a picture of me. You'll actually see my uh, face live if you come to office hours um, and also through some other presentations that I plan to have this semester. Uh, but that's what I look like. And my name is Dr. Jonathan Hall. I list this email here because uh, this is the preferred email that I would like for you to use. I have a mixed email account, uh, but that account I don't check as often. Um, and so if you need to get in contact with me, the quickest and best way to do it is to use this email, my first name dot last name at mail.wvu.edu. So just make a note of that um, uh, throughout the semester as we are communicating. A little bit more about me, uh, I have a PhD in ecology, so I'm actually not a trained geographer, uh, but if you know anything about geography or environmental geosciences, there's a lot of overlap between the two fields and ecology. I earned my PhD uh, from Ohio State University in 2011. And so my research interests involve wildlife. I do research with California condors, uh, have done research with uh, scavenging raptors in Rajasthan, India. That's actually uh, where this photo was taken for my dissertation. Um, and more broadly than that, I'm interested in the ways in which humans and uh, wildlife species interact. And so conflict, uh, coexistence, those sorts of things. And more recently have become interested in studying wild food systems, particularly hunting, uh, as it relates to uh, subsistence hunting and food systems and food security. So that's a little bit of what I do. Um, you can check out the uh, course YouTube channel for more information about my research. I have a video posted about my condor research, so please check that out. Okay, so I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Um, and so I have uh, posted a link to a Google form that you can fill out. And on it, I want you to uh, fill out some of this information uh, so that I can get to know you a little bit better. And uh, with uh, next week's lecture, I'll kind of share some of the things that uh, we have in common um, and a little bit more about the demographics of the class. Normally, we, we would be doing this in class and you all would be hopefully introducing yourselves to people that you don't know and talking about and presenting your uh, partner to uh, the class so that we can know a little bit more about you. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't do that uh, because of the current circumstances. So this will have to do. Um, so on that Google form, I'd like for you to indicate your name and also the name that you'd like to be called. So when you come in for office hours, I can refer to you by the name that you would prefer to be called, if you have a nickname or if you prefer your middle name uh, or whatever it may be. I want to be able to refer to you as, as the way that you want to be referred to. Uh, let me know what your hometown is. It's always interesting to see where people come from and to know where people come from. Uh, there's a lot of commonalities and differences with the place with the places that we are from, and so it'd be interesting to know that. Uh, certainly, your major, uh, what year you are in um, your academic journey, and then the career that you uh, want to have after you graduate or after you go to graduate school. Those sorts of things. Where do, where are you headed next, and ultimately, where do you want to end up? Um, and it's perfectly okay if you don't know uh, what that is at this stage. I know for me, as an undergraduate student, um, I did not know that uh, I, w I was going to end up being a professor. Um, so it's okay if you don't know what you want, but just give me an indication of where you're headed, uh, where you think you're headed. Um, and then just to kind of make things a little bit more interesting, I'd like for you to answer the following questions. What's your favorite story? Um, and what's your favorite non-human organism? Um, and so for your favorite story, that could be a, your favorite book, that could be your favorite um, show, that could be your favorite movie. But what? just what's your favorite story? And if you don't have a favorite, then, you know, let me know one of the, one of the stories that you really like. Okay? Um, and then for your, non, your favorite non-human organism, 
just let me know uh, what what organism you really like or what organism sort of captures your imagination. Um, and try to be sp specific. I know some people in the past in class have said something like dogs. Okay, that's great. I mean, canids are really cool. Um, but do you have a specific one that you're, you're pr pretty fond of? All right, and this will just sort of give me a, a sense of what sorts of organisms that uh, we, we have in mind when we step into a class like biogeography. Um, and will also hopefully help tailor some of the videos that I hope to post about organisms in and around town and um, interesting videos that we have in our lecture. Okay, so I will now answer the questions that I ask you to pose. Um, so, my name is Dr. Hall. I prefer you to call me Dr. Hall or you can call me Dr. J. Um, and just a point of note uh, for those of you who are communicating with other professors, uh, it's generally a good idea to refer to your professors by doctor um, just to keep things formal and that way you're never on the, uh, the wrong side of an interaction. Um, some professors prefer you or allow you to call them by their first name and that's fine, but it's always good when you're starting out and you haven't met someone uh, or professor in an academic setting to refer to them by their title. Um, so yeah, just make a note of that. Uh, I'm originally from Columbia, Maryland, which is in Howard County. It's about halfway between DC and Baltimore. Uh, I was originally born in California, but grew up most of my life in, in Maryland, so not too far from here. Uh, I earned a BS degree in biology from Morehouse College in Atlanta, and as I told you, I have a PhD in ecology. I've been at WVU for eight years now, which is kind of hard to believe, um, and have really enjoyed uh, being here. So it's a great university, a great space. Uh, Morgantown's beautiful. The state is beautiful. And uh, yeah, really happy here. Um, so my favorite story, um, I have a lot of stories that I, that I really enjoy, but the one that I has really kind of captured my attention and, and um, it's been really awesome is a, is a, a trilogy actually of the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. So I'm a huge science fiction sort of fantasy story uh, nerd. And so this, this series was... Um, a fantastic series by a fantastic author. So I encourage you all, if you're into that sort of thing, to check out um, this trilogy because it's just fantastic. Um, my favorite movie is uh, The Matrix. Uh, it's the greatest movie of all time. If you argue with me about this fact, I will fail you in the course. Just kidding. Uh, but really, it is the greatest movie ever made. Please don't argue with me about that. Um, and uh, my favorite show, uh, I have a lot of shows that I watch, and I have a six-year-old daughter who's just sort of getting into a lot of things, so it's nice to kind of revisit those. But one uh, show that really kind of captured my attention was uh, Kingdom, which is on Netflix. It's a show that involves politics and zombies and feudal Korea, um, and it's just a really, I think, a really well-done show. My favorite non-human organism is pictured here, um, and bonus points if anyone can um, name this organism, and I'll tell you what it is at the end of this uh, lecture, but one of the things that I like is that it reminds me of uh, velociraptors in Jurassic Park, um, because they are just kind of really gnarly and, and really awesome birds. But if you know what that is, um, then bonus points to you, I'll tell you at the end of the lecture. All right, so this course, Geography 307, you're here. You're in a course called Biogeography. So the question is, what is that? Um, and I imagine that a lot of you are here in this course because it's required. You might be an environmental geoscience major or it was an interesting elective. But the question is, what is biogeography? Um, and so not a lot of people know what biogeography is. When I tell people what this course is called, they often say, what is that? Um, but, you know, let's, let's sort of break this word apart. And of course, the first part of it is geography. And that's also a difficult, sometimes a difficult, or often a difficult uh, field to describe. Um, and as I said, my PhD is not in geography. My PhD is in ecology. And so until coming to WVU, I didn't really have a, a, a huge association with geography. But in meeting with faculty here and talking with, with folks and getting more familiar with the field in and of itself, I realized that the work that I was doing was geographical and in fact, biogeographical. Um, and so geography can be a little bit difficult to explain, but one person who um, 
a scholar within the field of geography, I think has done a really great job of explaining what it is. And that's uh, Dr. Ruth Wilson Gilmore. And in a recent podcast that she was on, she said that geography is the study of why things happen where they do. And that's a really broad sort of definition, um, and it needs to be, because geography really encapsulates a lot of different things. It's it's uh, physical environment. It's the human uh, social relations. It is mapping and, and so many different things. Um, and so I found that Dr. Uh, Gilmore's definition of geography is really important. And so when we add on top of that bio, right, biogeography, um, it is the study of how and why life happens, where and when it does. And that um, definition was coined by yours truly, uh, as you can see here, and uh, just now. And I came to that in sort of putting this initial introductory lecture together from um, Dr. Gilmore's uh, definition of geography. And so you're in a class where you are going to learn about the study of how and why life happens where and when it does okay so we're going to cover a lot during this course um, and i think it's going to be really interesting so before we get into that um, before we get into the first lecture which will be posted next week i just want to talk about the structure of the course um, how things are going to work as i mentioned and as you know this is a very different period in time for higher education or education in general we're all making adjustments so things are going to look a little bit differently than they have. So the first thing that you need to know about this course is when office hours are, and they're going to be virtual. Uh, every Wednesday between 1.30 and 2.30, um, there was a Zoom link on eCampus, and I will also email it to you so that you have access to that. And that's a standing meeting um, every Wednesday during my youngest child's nap time. Um, so that's the time of the day where I have peace and quiet in the house. Um, where I'll be available and the Zoom um, chat will be open and you can stop by for however long you need to within that hour. If we need to go over, then we can go over, um, but I'll be available. So just please use the Zoom link uh, and I'll be there every Wednesday. Uh, also realizing that you may have other obligations um, during the week. You may have classes that are synchronous uh, during this time. So please email me um, if you need to uh, schedule an appointment for another time other than Wednesday between 1.30 and 2.30. And uh, we'll coordinate our schedule so that uh, we can make time during that week. All right? So please use make use of office hours, and I'll be available every Wednesday. Okay, so for assignments, uh, again, things are going to look a little bit different, but the thing to remember is that uh, your questions about how the course is going to be structured are probably answered in the syllabus. Um, so what you're going to be working on this semester, uh, graded on, you'll be graded on two exams. Uh, you'll be graded on questions of the week, and I'll explain all of these things later. And there are a series of reflections and uh, activities that are going to be assigned. And so this makes up the bulk of what you're going to be graded on uh, this semester. Um, and that's essentially it. Uh, these are you know difficult times and challenging times, and so... I wanted to pare things down a little bit more uh, and focus more on discussion of the material, exposure to the material, um, with fewer assignments that you were going to that you were going to be uh, graded on than normally. Other things that are going to be a part of the class, uh, we're going to be listening to podcasts. Uh, I'll be assigning some readings for you all to reflect on, and um, every week I will post an organ a video of an organism of the week. And what that involves is me walking around town. Uh, a lot of these videos are going to come from me being in the back in, in my backyard or going on hikes. Uh, and I'll try to highlight different organisms that we see around town. And so the goal of these, not really assignments, but these videos are to help you get more familiar with your local biogeography, understanding what organisms are around you. And there's a lot to look at. There's a lot to discover. Um, and so... Uh, I hope that you all will enjoy those, and um, I'll do my best to make them uh, as interesting and uh, as uh, interesting and fun as possible. All right, so I'll take a break now and um, direct you to uh, look on eCampus for a link to the 
uh, syllabus and the course schedule. And so I'll go into more detail on those um, assignments and what exactly we're going to be covering throughout this um, throughout the semester. So what you want to do now is stop the video, go to eCampus, um, and click on the links to the YouTube channel where I'm going to record um, going over the syllabus a little bit more, the grading structure, the point structure, and those sorts of things. And then once you're done with that, you can come back and I can talk a little bit more about the structure of the course. Okay, so see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you all took a break here and went to uh, eCampus and uh, have watched the video about uh, me going over the schedule and the course syllabus. And so if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to go into just reiterate some of the things from that video in this presentation so that you can kind of uh, make sure that you understand. So as I indicated in the, in the video with the syllabus and um, the course schedule, Grading, there's no extra credit for this course. Um, <clears throat> there are no extra credit assignments for this course, although there will be some extra credit opportunities on exams. Um, there's no curve in this course. And late assignments, I don't accept late assignments. You don't have a lot of assignments um, this semester, and most of the assignments that uh, I have given are uh, opportunities for you all to just engage with the material. They're not really like quizzes or things where I'm grading your content comprehension. It's just about answering the questions and completing those things, okay? Um, so, uh, not many opportunities for extra credit. There's no curve in the class and late assignments, I don't accept those. But um, again, I've structured the course so that it shouldn't be uh, a big burden for you, particularly during these uh, difficult times during the pandemic. To get the assignments done but that being said times right now are especially hard okay so it's going to be really important that you complete all the assignments on time that you come to office hours and of course most importantly that you communicate your needs um, we are dealing with uh, a really difficult situation and things can change very quickly uh, whether or not that's um, you know, a loved one being sick or ourselves being sick or having to take care of someone or whatever the case may be. Um, so I just ask that you do your best to communicate what's going on. And if you miss an assignment or if it doesn't look like you're going to be able to complete, a, complete an assignment, to communicate that with me, uh, you know, let me know, you know, a little bit about what's going on. I don't have to know all the details. You don't need a doctor's note or anything like that. I trust that you are going to be communicating with me honestly, um, but I, it's hard for me to make accommodations if you don't tell me what's going on. So just make sure you do that, um, and we'll be able to get through the semester uh, all right. So academic misconduct, I take that very seriously. Please don't do it. No, seriously, please don't do it. Um, it, it is a really difficult and painful process to go through that, um, and so I expect you all to be doing your own work. Um, I expect you all to be giving answers that are your own, um, and that, you know, I, ex I also expect that you, you're going to be communicating with each other about material and trying to figure out um, answers to questions and things like that. Um, the assignments that I, that I assign to you are to be completed individually, um, and so just be mindful of that. Communicate with your, with your colleagues, ask questions, sort of get on the same page. Um, but if you all are, you know, reproducing work, copying and pasting and those sorts of things, then there's going to be a problem and, uh, it's just really not a fun thing to do. So, um, please be mindful of that. Please be mindful of the university policy on academic misconduct. It's very important that you follow that. Okay. Uh, social justice. I also take this very seriously as does the university. I follow the university policy. So if there are any concerns, issues, or questions, please, come to office hours, email me. Uh, obviously you can't hang around after class because this is a, a asynchronous, but please send me an email, come to office hours, let me know. Uh, if the issue is something that you feel more comfortable talking to someone else about, then the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion uh, his number is here. You may feel free to call them uh, or to send them an email and seek their services. I encourage you that. Uh, disability services, 
Uh, if you need accommodations, please contact the office and make sure that you uh, that you have made the necessary arrangements. What will happen is that our office will contact me. Um, but if you know that you need accommodations, um, please follow up with me to make sure that I have received those accommodations uh, if that's something that's necessary. And then to just to go beyond a little bit, um, uh, a step further on social justice, uh, and I think this is really important because we, uh, uh, in addition to living in a time where a uh, pandemic is a big thing that's looming in our everyday lives, uh, all you have to do is turn on the news and know that social justice issues of race are, are really uh, prevalent uh, in the news and in, in reality. And that's something that I think we all are uh, dealing with, we're all processing, we're all subject to. And so I just want to talk about that a little bit more uh, to make sure that we're on the same page, okay? And so everyone, no matter their identity, deserves and will be given respect in my class, all right? That's first and foremost. Um, I support the right of undocumented uh, immigrants to seek an education without fear of deportation. Um, I think, you know, education is one of the most powerful things um, that uh, human beings can be exposed to, and it's one of the most uh, important things that human beings can, can seek within society. And um, I think that it should be a right that, that people have to have education. Okay, and so uh, I support undocumented immigrants' right to seek an education. Um, I support your right as a student to express your alignment with political issues, no matter what those political issues are, but there are some caveats with that. As long as those political issues um, are grounded in scholarly and empirical evidence, um, you know, political opinions and political ideas, some of them are... Uh, supported by uh, empirical evidence or supported by evidence, and some of them are not. Um, and so it's important to make that distinction. Um, and I support your right with whatever political issue um, <clears throat> that you, you know, would like to express, so long as that expression does not call for violence against another group and or supremacy of one group over another. Um, and this can also be a very tricky thing because, you know, the, the equity with which certain ideas and political issues get expressed and what those issues are actually calling for can sometimes be confusing, uh, particularly within uh, a society that doesn't really do a good job of communicating um, sort of the complete history of uh, relationships between different groups of people, okay? And so these, these ideas that I'm about to uh, talk about are really important for distinguishing which political issues are appropriate within this space, this classroom space, uh, are appropriate to express, and which ones aren't, okay? So it's important to, to, to know that a call to be treated equitably and fairly is not the same as a call for supremacy of one identity over the other identities. Um, and so there are certain groups within this country that have been and continue to be structurally marginalized against. And there are many calls for... Um, the treatment, the equitable treatment uh, of those groups that have been historically and and uh, in present day uh, structurally oppressed. Okay, and so that's not the same. Calling for that equitable treatment, calling for that fair treatment, is not the same as calling for a particular group that has been historically oppressed to dominate uh, another group that has not been historically oppressed. Those are very different things. Um, and the other idea is that a call for accountability of individuals and more importantly, structures or systems that have enacted violence and injustice is not the same as a call for violence or supremacy, okay? And so, you know, the idea here is that if, you know, you are being mistreated, you calling for, or historically being mistreated, you calling for uh, equitable treatment, fair treatment, and for those who have not treated you fairly or the systems that have not treated you fairly to stop, is not the same as calling for violence or calling for supremacy of your group over the other to sort of turn the tables on the other. It's simply uh, a call for being treated fairly, okay? And this may not seem like it's a, a, a really salient point for a course like biogeography, but when we talk about uh, later on in the semester, when we talk about wildlife conservation, when we talk about the, the Anthropocene, um, this idea of social justice and, and equity and accountability is actually going to come back into play. So I just wanted to 
uh, outline that in greater detail and to make sure that we're all on the same page about these issues. Okay, so if you have any further questions or if you have any further comments that you want to talk with me about, please feel free to email me or come by office hours and we can discuss. All right, so course material, as I said in the previous uh, or in the in the video going over the syllabus, but just to reiterate, the video lectures are going to be posted every Monday uh, by 9 a.m. on the class YouTube channel. Uh, there's going to be a channel for um, the lecture videos, and there's also going to be a channel, or there is a channel for uh, the organism of the week. And so the link for that is on the syllabus. It will also be in eCampus. Uh, so please make sure you're checking in regularly and certainly every Monday for the lecture material because that's going to form the, bul the bulk of the content that we cover for the class. Uh, the slides are also, the, the uh, lecture slides are also going to be posted on eCampus, so you have another copy of those. Uh, you know, we all learn at uh, different ways and so maybe watching the lecture is going to be really helpful for you and you won't necessarily need the slides but if you you know need the slides and need to kind of study from those separate from my narration then they'll be available okay and I'll also have a link to the lecture video that corresponds with those lecture slides on eCampus so that material will be on eCampus you can bookmark the YouTube channel um, to keep up to date with things. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you uh, get an alert whenever new videos are posted. So I suggest that you do those things, but there's gonna be multiple sources where you can access the material. A question, each question of the week uh, that I'll pose at the end of the lecture, um, you will fill that out in a Google form that'll be uh, on a link on the eCampus folder. Um, and so the important thing to remember of, uh, for this Google form and filling out this question of the week is that you have to be logged in using your Mix um, account. A lot of you have personal Google accounts that you, can, that you use on a regular basis, but in order for me to make sure that everyone is getting credit and that uh, the people who are filling out these questions are actually members of the class, you need to be logged in to your Google account identity that comes through the university which comes through your mix account okay so please when you're clicking on that link make sure you're logged in and if you're not switch uh, your account so that you are logged into your mix account and then fill out the Google form okay so as I mentioned before the questions will be posed at the end of each lecture um, and the question will also be on the Google form itself okay so make sure that you are answering that question um, and is due the Sunday uh, before the lecture slides for the next week are posted by before midnight. All right. Uh, so make sure you're filling those out. Those questions of the week are worth 10 points each. It's an easy way for you all to make sure that you're getting, you know, 15 point or 150 points uh, towards your final grade. Uh, so please make sure you do those things on time. Um, and really the best thing to do is to fill out the question um, at the end of the lecture to not waste any or to not wait um, after you finish watching uh, the lecture videos. All right. <clears throat> and I should also say that that question of the week, there's no sort of right answer. I'm not grading you on your, your content comprehension. It's used as a primer for the next week's content. Okay. So fill it out. Sometimes the questions will be a little bit silly. Sometimes the questions will be kind of seemingly off the wall. Um, but that's just a way for me to kind of engage with you a little bit more with the material uh, in a different way than just talking at you, okay? Uh, more on the course material, uh, I will ask you to, to answer some questions based on a podcast listening or a reading that I assigned, um, and those will be reflections. There's also one activity that will have a worksheet um, associated with it, okay? And so uh, virtually every week you will have, or almost every week you will have uh, these reflections or activities to complete. And again, they are due the Sunday uh, before the next week's material is posted before midnight. Okay, so make sure that you answer those questions. Uh, the prompts will be on eCampus. It'll be very easy for you all to fill those out, to answer those questions, and then post your answers to the eCampus folder. So just make sure you're staying up on, on those materials. Uh, last thing, you know, I mentioned the organism of the week. So each week I will feature a video of a local organism, a plant, animal, or fungus. Um, and this is, again, just a way for you all to become more familiar with 
the organisms that are around you. I'm going to select things that you would be that would be easy for you to find or easy for you all to see. Um, as you all are walking around campus, or not even campus, but just sort of in the area. Um, if you're at home, um, hopefully this will be an organism that will will have e you'll either have that species wherever you may be, or it'll be uh, something that is uh, fairly common so that there might be another species that's closely related, okay? And so this is just a way for you all to kind of engage a little bit more with the uh, non-human species around you. I'll post these videos every Wednesday. Um, there are no questions or graded assignments that is associated with this, but if you tune into these videos, uh, there'll be an opportunity for you all to earn bonus points on your exams. And so what I'll have is maybe one or two bonus questions on the midterm and the final exam um, that will reference one of these uh, or, or more of these videos. So just make sure you're staying up on those. Um, they won't be very long and I'll just kind of uh, introduce you to the organism and give some facts and um, yeah, and that'll be that. All right. So speaking of exams, my testing style for both the, the midterm and the final exam, uh, which are, or the final is cumulative, um, but more focused on the, the material that we cover after the, the midterm exam. There'll be a few memorization questions. Um, my testing style is to really kind of engage with you about how you are synthesizing the material um, and how you, how you problem solve with questions. And so most of the information are synthesis questions. And what I've uh, discovered in teaching this course now for the 10th time, I think, um, that this is sometimes a big adjustment for um, students, the, the types of questions that I ask. They're not memorization questions. Uh, I'm not interested in how well you remember something, but how well you comprehend something. All right, and so I'm interested in how well you understand the material not how well you memorize the material, those are two different things, how well you communicate your understanding, and that's really important. You can know a fact or you can know uh, some content, but if you're not able to communicate it effectively, um, then you don't really know it, okay? And so my questions are geared towards, you know, how are you able to put your ideas together and answer a question? Um, and how well you can apply what you've learned to questions you've never seen before. Sometimes I get um, questions about this course, you know, is there a study guide? Are there questions that you can give so that I can be prepared for answering those questions? And oftentimes what that ends up being are questions that professors ask you or give you in study guides, and then they just repeat those questions on the exam, which is getting back to memorization, which is not really, I, I think, an effective way, and research shows is not really an effective way for you to learn the material. Okay, and so how to succeed in this class is going to be really important. And so if you don't know or you think you don't know, you need to ask. All right. If there's a concept or an idea or something that I'm explaining or something that, you know, comes up in a podcast or comes up in a reading that's not quite clear to you, then you need to ask me. You need to ask me. You need to ask your classmates or anyone uh, who you think might be able to help. All right, and this is one of the ways that you really begin to solidify your knowledge and begin to solidify your understanding of the content is if you ask the question. You have to fully engage your brain, and memorization doesn't really do that, okay? Um, it's sort of like memorization versus the types of questions that I'm going to be asking you where I want you to be um, as students in this class is kind of the difference between, you know, just doing push-ups uh, versus doing CrossFit, okay? Um, and so I want you to be doing CrossFit with this knowledge and not just being, you know, working out one, one particular muscle group, all right? Um, so that requires you all to ask questions, and it also requires you to review, review the course material every day, every day. But here's the, here's the good catch about that is that you don't need to spend a lot of time reviewing the course material if you do it every day. So between 15, 15 and 60 minutes a day of course material review will keep you in good academic shape in this course. Um, oftentimes we have a tendency to kind of, you know, go to class or review the material once in that classroom setting and then not look at it again until exam time. And that's really not a, a good way to be. 
But the other thing to realize is that if you're going over 60 minutes every day of, re of reviewing the material, then you begin to, uh, that, that's too much time um, in general. <clears throat> now, we all have different learning styles, and it might take you longer than 60 minutes, but I really want you to keep your course material review between 15 and 60 minutes every day, all right? Um, and as long as you're doing it every day, you're staying up on the material. So, and listening to the lectures the first time doesn't count as a review of the course material, all right? And so you definitely need to listen to the course materials. But after that, after you, um, you know, watching and listening to the lecture, spend some time just sort of going over your notes, you know, 10 minutes going over your notes and, and, and seeing maybe or writing down what you might not have understood so that you can go back and kind of rework that material in the next days of the following day's review. All right. So the idea here is frequency is really important. So shorter, uh, consistent time chunks of looking at material, reviewing the material is better than spending hours and hours and hours a day uh, or even hours and hours and hours and hours right before an exam. OK, I don't want you to be doing that. Uh, particularly during uh, in the midst of a pandemic where you know your attention is is really stretched thin okay so review the course material every day ask questions and you'll be in good shape other things come to office hours and not just during exam time it's really important that you ask questions that you engage with me you engage with your classmates uh, on these things so please do come to office hours either either every Wednesday or by appointment Talking out the material is really important as well. Um, you can try giving yourself a mini lecture every week on what you've learned, going from your notes and just talking the material out. Um, because it's important to see how well the information flows coming out of your mouth or coming out of your brain. Um, and you really begin to learn what it is that you feel confident uh you, what, what material you feel confident with and what material you don't feel confident with by verbalizing, by talking it out loud, not just sort of going over it in your head. Because the way that you speak about things and how clearly things come out of your mouth and smoothly they come out of your mouth and clearly they come out of your mouth is going to be more representative of how you're going to be answering questions on the exam than just echoing those things in your mind. Okay, so take that time to verbalize the material if you have uh, someone, a roommate, or your parents, or whoever you're living with, your you know your pet, if you have one at home, uh, talking the material out to someone, I think is a really effective uh, way of succeeding in this class. Particularly given the way that I ask questions and given the way that my exam questions are structured. Okay, um, and the last one is really important, as Samuel L. Jackson read in a great children's book, is to go the bleep to sleep. All right, get some sleep. And I know that this is really this is really challenging uh, during this time, um, can be really challenging during this time, but there are a few things that are better than getting a good night's rest, consistently getting a good night's rest. Um, and again, like you may be in a very different situation uh, now than you were expecting to before the semester started. You likely have you know more obligations uh, and things like that, but prioritizing your sleep is going to be a really great way for you to show up, not only in this class, but to show up and be able to do the things that you need to do, but especially before exams, okay? So protect your sleep time. It's really important, all right? Okay, so coming to the end here, and I want to talk uh, more about the big picture, all right? Uh, to kind of take a step back and look at this sort of beyond just this course and beyond biogeography, and this course really isn't uh, about biogeography, even though you're enrolled in this course and that's the title. This, this course is about the material um, as a vessel for understanding um, how you learn, okay? And so this, is, this class is an opportunity for you to build useful learning skills. So beyond knowing facts about biology and biogeography, um, I want you to be focusing on building useful learning skills. And that's part of the reason why I structure my exams and the course itself 
uh, to get you to really kind of do cr the CrossFit for your mind uh, rather than just kind of doing like isolation curls or, you know, just working on one particular muscle group. Because being able to synthesize information, to deal with questions that you've never seen before, to communicate your understanding really effectively are the, are, are the core skills. It's why you're in college. It's why you're a, in, at an institution of higher learning. It's to put facts in your head, yes, indeed, but it's really to, to build useful learning skills. The other thing is to find out more about your interests, right? I mean, you know, we're, we're, you all are at this stage where you're deciding or trying to decide what it is that you want to do with your life as an adult um, uh, once you graduate, okay? And so, you know, for me, a lot of learning and a lot of discovery happened at this stage of trying different things, um, realizing that I was interested in, in one thing and not interested in the other thing. Um, and so take this time to really engage with all of the things, all the information that you're being exposed to, uh, to decide, you know, what it is that you might be interested in. And of course, you know, building useful communication skills is really, really important. Um, it is the primary way that human beings, you know, build societies and get along with each other or try to get along with each other. Uh, being able to effectively uh, communicate is such an important skill that goes beyond the facts that you know. You can know a lot of facts, but if you're not communicating very well, um, then it's very difficult to 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 get along. Okay, um, and so more about the big picture. Um, you know, in in keeping that in mind and keeping the fact that you're building skills, that you're learning more about your interests, that you're building effective communication skills. Your exact letter grade uh, is is not as important as those things, okay? And so you can get an A in this course or any course, and not meet the primary objective of being in an institution of higher learning, which is building your learning skills, uh, finding out more about your interests, honing your interests, and communicating. All right. Some of the best students that I've had in my class oftentimes aren't the students who earn the highest grade. Right? Because earning the highest grade or getting an A in any course is, is most of the time really about how familiar you are going in to the material that's being covered or your ability to communicate in a way that's familiar to academics. All right? And so what I'm interested in is not so much your final grade, but where you start from at the course and where you end up, what your progress is during this time in this course. All right? And so because of the way that this course is, is structured, the questions, the material, I'm going to push you intellectually, right? Like this course is, as I've, you know, just come up with this analogy, this course is intellectual CrossFit. It's, it's, it's not an isolation curl. We're going to be covering a lot of material. We're going to be integrating a lot of ideas. Um, and that's one of the things that's really great about being in an environmental geoscience program or a geography program or, a, you know, in this department is that we pull from a lot of different areas. We use a lot of different skills. And so if you're not used to that, it's going to be uncomfortable. But I guarantee you at the end of the semester, if you engage, you, you follow the uh, material and you engage with things on a, on a daily basis, you're going to be really intellectually fit at the end of this course, okay? So this class shouldn't be easy, and it's not. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's unreasonable. That it doesn't mean that it's not going to be enjoyable. We're going to stretch uh, our thinking. We're going to stretch what, you know, our boundaries of what we think uh, we, we're able to accomplish. And I'm going to be right there with you to help you help you through that. So if you focus on the big picture, you're going to get the most out of this class. The more you focus on that letter grade, and I understand that many of you, you know, are concerned about getting an A in this course so that you can go on to the next stage of life. And that's, that's very important, right? You want to make sure that you're meeting those milestones that you can put yourself in the best position to sort of move on to the next stage. But if you become singularly focused on that, you're going to miss the bigger picture and you're going to miss what this course is all about, okay? And so if you focus on the big picture, you're going to get the most out of this class. Thank you, Deadpool, for the applause. Okay, so the last thing, or almost the last thing, because we have to get to the question of the week. The the last, the next to last thing is that 2020 has been, uh, in relative terms, an unmitigated disaster of a year. Okay? Um, 
the pandemic is certainly uh, something that is ongoing and has been devastating to not only um, American society, but society and human societies everywhere. And we're still dealing with that, right? People are still dying. People are still sick. People are still struggling financially, struggling with so many different things because uh, of the way that we've had to prioritize our physical safety, which is having all sorts of other effects. And so I don't know what your situation, what your individual situation is, um, but I, you know, am willing to bet that it's, you know, orders of magnitude more challenging than you thought it was going to be uh, when this year started. Uh, on top of that, we're also dealing with uh, a very fraught, intense political situation. Uh, there are a lot of demonstrations uh, for racial justice within the country and a lot of very strong opinions and things like that on a bunch of different sides of this issue, okay? And so that's something else that we are really dealing with uh, in terms of protests, in terms of police violence, in terms of a bunch of different things that's that's um, really taking a toll. Um, we also had, you know, wildfires, both in the Congo and Australia. We're dealing with wildfires in, in California. I mean, it's 2020 has just been really rough. Murder hornets, which we are going to talk about, uh, uh, giant Asian hornets um, are starting to show up in this part of the world, and we'll talk about why that is actually really terrifying uh, from an ecological perspective. And it just seems like 2020, the year 2020, is just sort of like throwing things at us. Hurricanes, there's what it's, I think there's going to be uh, two hurricanes occurring at the same time. They're going to be striking Louisiana. I mean, it's just like this year has been really rough uh, and continues to be really rough, and it's going to continue to be. To be challenging. So we're all in new territory uh, and we're going to need to continually adjust to that new territory. New situations, new challenges that are showing up, old ones that we're still dealing with and those sorts of things. Um, so I will expect this um, of you and I ask you to hold me accountable in the same way that the most important thing that we need to have is patience, empathy, and communication. All right, we're not going to be able to, uh, to to meet all of our obligations in the same time frames that we're used to. Um, we need to do a better job of giving people the benefit of the doubt in that their uh, ability to to um, meet their obligations may be due to you know unprecedented and really difficult times. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate that the most important thing is that you communicate. I will do my best to communicate to you. When things come up and I'm not able to meet some of the obligations just this afternoon uh, or just this morning, uh, my wife and I were planning on having a, a someone come and babysit our, our children, our six-year-old and three-year-old, but that person canceled because they're not feeling well. Um, and so, you know, we had to make adjustments and that's why this lecture and these materials are, are being posted later than I anticipated. Okay, so those are the sorts of things that we have to, that we're going to have to deal with, and, and I'll do my best to communicate, and I ask you all to do the same. Um, and lastly, you know, like, we can get through this, we can do this, we can um, uh, manage these challenges and get through these difficult times, but it's not going to happen without each other, okay? And so that's why it's really important to be patient, to be empathetic, and to communicate, all right? Um, okay, so the last thing that we'll end on is how we're gonna end every lecture uh, throughout the semester with a question of the week. And so this question is to prime you for our next week's lecture where we're gonna be talking about the history of biogeography, what it uh, has meant to be human beings, kind of understanding and cataloging and describing um, the world, the natural world around them and what sorts of skills are involved with that. So I have a hypothetical question of the week for you. If you are traveling to a new planet outside of our solar system, okay, let's just say that that's possible, um, uh, and with the same number, you're going to a planet with the same number of species as planet Earth, what five things would you take with you on this journey? Okay, And it can be anything. What, what, what are the five things you would want to take with you if you were going on a, on a xenobiological journey to another solar system, to another planet where you had not been introduced to any of those species, but you knew that that planet had as many species, was as speciose as this planet. What would you want to have with you? What would you want to take with you? 
Okay. And, you know, I say five things, but it could also be maybe, you know, a person that you would want to have with you. So uh, log on to uh, eCampus, click the link for the question of the week for week one, answer those questions. And then when uh, I see you all or when I talk to you all again next week on Monday, I'll share some of that information uh, with you on some of the things that we all discussed that we wanted to have on this hypothetical journey. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for being patient. Thanks for being flexible. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this semester. I'll see you all at office hours. Uh, see you on YouTube. And please stay safe, take care of each other, and uh, have a good rest of the opening week. All right.